So what you want to do is you want to pull them down and cut them up way up high. That's where the flavor is. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Beastly Thought Show, episode 97. 97. Uh, yeah, that was a throwback just... intro. That was a throwback <laughs> intro. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. I don't know what that was. I am. I don't even... Uh, that was a throwback. I'm really freaked, freaked out now. <laughs> Just having some fun. Just having 97. some fun. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we got Destiny news to talk about. You know I want to jump on that pretty hardcore. Uh, I want to hear what you guys have been playing this week, uh, and I also want to know what you've been up to. So why don't we start off with Robbie. Robbie, what have you been up to this week, man? Uh, you know what? I'll let my uh, good colleagues and friends go first. I'll save mine for last. Oh. Just because I, well, I want to dive into a conversation with one of the games I've been playing. So All we're right. going to kind of discuss the future of the franchise. All right. Uh, well, I can talk a little bit about what I've been playing. I actually took advantage of the PlayStation Flash sale, so I bought four or five games I had never played before. Is that still going on? Because I didn't even hear about this. I think it may be over today. I'm, I'm not sure. I would definitely check. Uh, okay. I know that when I when I bought my games, it was still going on. But um, I bought The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which is graphically one of the best-looking games I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I, I bought Hotline Miami, which is becoming one of my favorite games I've ever played. Uh, I bought uh, Whispering Willow, which is kind of a mystery game where you're this young lady trying to find out what happened to your father. And I want to say two more games that maybe I haven't had a chance to really delve into them. Were these like been... those super deep discounts, like $2, $3 games? Uh, up to five. I think yeah, I spent nice. $25 for like five games. So, awesome. I, I, and, you know, uh, some of these games are definitely worth a lot more than that. Um, the taking of e the Vanishing of Ethan Carter in particular really struck me as an amazing game. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Unlike anything I've ever seen before, uh, it's so photorealistic when you walk around in that world and you get close to objects and you look at them, it seems like you're really there. It's one of those crazy kind of experiences where you kind of look at your hand. You're like, am I in this world or am I watching this on TV? <laughs> it's really, really incredible. Uh, Hotline Miami. For the people who play that game, oh, my God, it's so addicting. I'm, I started playing it last night. I'm already, like, on Chapter 12. Uh, I've just been going nonstop on it. It's incredibly addicting, very fun. And, uh, are, you yeah. playing it, are you playing on your Vita or are you playing on the actual console? I'm playing on the console. I downloaded it on my Vita today, though. So I it's, actually, played... it's actually a really good Vita game. It's actually one of the better controlled ones because the analogs don't cramp your hands up as much because the way it plays, it's, it's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely try that uh, when I get some downtime at work. But um, I've really been enjoying that, and I just started playing Halo 5. Um, and I'm not far enough to really give any details away or really say – yay or nay as far as whether or not I think it's an amazing game. Uh, graphically, it looks really impressive. I love the uh, the opening, the intro, and the way you're introduced to the world. Other than that, it feels like Halo. You get this new thrust where you get to thrust into people and stuff. It's really, really cool. Tell me about it. I have, yeah. <laughs> Every first-person shooter is going with 3D movement now. Either it's a thruster or it's like a hovering thing. or Yeah. yeah. I have you played any multiplayer of that or just single-player? Not yet. I, I believe I've played the first map of the single-player uh, and it's been kind of a crazy week uh, with me as far as my family and stuff, so I really haven't had enough time to, to game the way I want it to. This gaming I'm talking about has been the last two days. For a lot of people who don't know, uh, my stepdad passed away on the 15th. His name is Terry uh, Spoonman, and uh, he's a really good guy. And, uh, you know, it's been everyone in the family kind of coming together around my mom. They've been together, married for 16 years, had a long battle with cancer uh, for the last five years. And... Um, so it's been one of those situations where everybody's been kind of focused on my mom uh, to give her all the support that she needs. We actually started a GoFundMe uh, to support my mom uh, in this time of need because my mom, for the last many, many years, she's been the single source of income in the household. And so to take care of final expenses and things like that, we started a GoFundMe. It's GoFundMe.com forward slash Spoonman, which is his nickname. Well, there's, a, there's a link to that in the description. So if any of you guys would like to, to donate to help out uh, my mom in this very, very tough time in her life, it will definitely be appreciated. And if you can't, that's okay, but please, if you get an opportunity, uh, share that link. It would help out so much. I'd also like to thank uh, Miss Barb. You know who you are, uh, Robbie's mom. She was one of the first people to donate. And I, I want to say thank you so much to my subscribers who have been uh, so gracious uh, on my YouTube channel uh, for, for donating the way that you have. It's been unbelievable. Thank you so much to everybody out there um, for all your support. It's hard to believe, you know, until something like this happens, you don't know just how many friends you really have. And uh, when something like this happens and you see people kind of open their hearts 
and, and even their wallets, it really blows you away that you really have meaningful relationships out there, sometimes with people you never tangibly touch. So thank you all so much to everybody who's uh, supported my family through this tough time, and let's get on with the show. Absolutely. Hey, beastly, Beastly, where's Spoon Man come from? Uh, Akron, Akron, Ohio. Oh, no, so, no, no. song? Okay. No, I mean, like, name. Nickname, oh. nickname. Where, where's, oh. you, where, where's that from? Uh, he's too damn old for me to know. No, uh, it, when, when he when he was a kid, when he was a kid, um, people would always joke at him and tell him he was built like a spoon because he was okay. real tall and slender, and he had a big, big biscuit on top. So it kind of it kind of stuck with him, and it made sense. But uh, he was one of the best best men I ever known. Uh, he was the only guy I've ever known that actually treated my mother with love and respect, and uh, he means a lot to my family, a, a lot to me. My mom, my sister, and he was just a great guy, and we're really blessed to have known him and had that experience. So, good deal. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. See, I thought it was the Soundgarden song, but I'm, yeah. That's I why. That's why I asked. That's why I asked. Soundgarden. <laughs> Boom, classic that, rock that, that, song now. That's classic rock. With your hands. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, Soundgarden is classic rock. Yeah, now. Right, classic dude. rock station. Get the fuck out. Oh, love that song. Oh my god. god. Yeah. Doesn't I'll feel too good, does it? it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the old TV actually played music. Hey, Inner Black, it's been a long time. How old are you now? I want to say like 27? No, I'm 30. I'm 30. 30? I turned 30, oh, 30 this year, actually. All right, you're getting up there, man. You're going to yeah. be feeling it pretty soon. You know, I got, I got a gray hair in my beard. This shit is real, man. <laughs> Hardcore. You guys, you guys make me feel so much better about my age. Thank you. Hey, you, Robbie. What have you been playing, Inner Black? <laughs> Um, I played um, a little bit of Rainbow Six yesterday, and then I finished up Trials on two characters. And Trials of Osiris. Yeah. We haven't yeah. talked about Trials of Osiris. Can we talk a little bit of Trials? Yeah, 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 yeah. We haven't talked about Destiny in a very long time, Briar, to be quite honest. We used to spend 30 minutes of every episode talking about it. <laughs> it was a running joke. Yeah. 30 yeah. seconds every I know, episode. I couldn't Let's move you guys it. off of the topic. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. And then I played uh, Transformers Devastation, actually. Um, I'm finishing that up. I know it's a short game. I just I've been playing so much lately. I've been playing a little bit of Lego Dimensions this morning, but other than that, I've been. Oh, and I also st- st- uh, started Tales of Zeteria for the first time, and I put like two hours into that. Ooh, what's super that? I haven't heard of that one. It's like super R- RPG, like from uh, Japan. It's like uh, wickedly old school. Yeah, JRPG, it's really, but it looks really good. Very niche, very niche uh, JRPG, but they have really good games. All right, talk to me about Trials. All right, so this is my favorite thing in video games right now, Trials of Osiris. It, it somehow <laughs> it makes me like sweat and like it brings out a competitive side in me that I don't think I've really felt <laughs> oh, since sorry. I was like, you know, in like high school sports. You know, like that's how competitive I feel when I'm in Trials of Osiris. Uh, Unfortunately, I've found that there's a lot of lag in it now. Have you kind of seen the same thing? Yes, yeah, especially towards like the further you get along because yeah. It, from what I've heard, they match you up with people who are like around the same. Like, oh, we finished three rounds and we're doing good. You're gonna play against dudes with three rounds. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we definitely have experienced lag intermittently that here and there. Did you, Did you get a chance to play it during the summer when it was first introduced with House of Wolves? Yeah, yeah. It's it it tend to run really good then. I don't know. I don't know what it what is different from now until then. Like more people playing now, but you would think that would help it more. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, they, when they first brought it out, they really advertised it as it's going to be connection-based matchmaking. That's the only criteria. So you're going to have your best connections in Trials of Osiris. Then when the Taken King came out, they came out and said, well, now we're going to have this tiered system where if you're like, if you've got two wins in your, in your, uh, on your card, you're going to get matched up against other teams that have two wins. If you got five wins, you're going to be matched up against other teams with five wins. And if you got Eight wins, you're going to be matched up against another team with eight wins. And those eight win matches, man, are some of the sweatiest matches oh, I've ever played oh my in God. any video game, oh my man. God. you got people fighting and doing any dirty trick they can to yep. get a win in those matches. Slide shotgunning, dude. That's when that shit comes out. Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> I'm all over that. Invective? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. I am as dirty as it comes when it comes to that eighth win. Yep. <laughs> Today I was using... Uh, my warlock with Viking funeral and an invective. The thing I is, would you rather throw grenades and fucking melee and people and hit them with my shotgun? Would you rather have the trade be that the connection stays good throughout, 
no yeah. matter what level you're playing. That's what I prefer, you know? Like, keep it keep it running solid all the way through. I don't care if you have eight wins or two wins, you know? Yeah. I, you know, I like a lot of the changes they made to Trials of Cyrus in the Taken King. I like the, the way packages work and the way bounties work in it. Oh, hell uh, yeah. But I do feel like the connection is really... You know, in the Crucible in general, it's gotten worse as time has gone by. And in Trials of Osiris, like, I want that connection to be pristine. So which two characters did you bring through today? I brought, uh, yesterday I did my Hunter and my Warlock. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I have a, I have a Titan. I don't really play as him. I don't, not, not for the sake of that I don't really like the class. I just don't really like their gear. Like the gear on the Warlock and Hunter, I like the way they look as a character. The Titan looks like a bulky dummy, you know? Looks like a retarded garbage truck. (laughs) (laughs) Never thought of it that way. (laughs) Titan Master Race. I got a message today before a match that said, uh, I can't believe your KD is so low, I'm going to crush you, you stupid YouTuber. And then we... Pounded him. I think I went ten and one or ten and two. No, I went ten That's, and two. My KD was five point oh. Suck it, shit talkers. Yeah, 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 suck it. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. You don't do that to people. Oh, you don't it do felt that to so good, man. It, fired him up. it did fire me up. It fired me up big time. I sent him a message that said, uh, "Subscribe to Briar Rabbit <laughs> <laughs> for tips and tricks." <laughs> for thief let's plays, ask more for tips yeah, and tricks. Thief let's plays. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh. That's the so, worst kind of burn, man. Damn. It's like last on the news item list, but I feel like I, I want to talk about it because we've talked about Destiny already. I want to talk about the Destiny news that kind of yeah. sprang up this week. You guys okay with kind of skipping ahead on this one? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Let's, let's get into this, yeah. All right, so we got two things. I, I feel like they're both connected. Uh, one of them is a Kotaku article was published. I think it was titled, like, uh, The Malaise of of Destiny players or something like that, uh, where they basically said they had an inside source that said Destiny 2 has been delayed from its September 2016 release. Yeah. Uh, You know, so there's... A lot of talk is like, how can you delay something that was never announced? But I think it's a reasonable expectation that uh, most of the Destiny community had that we'd see Destiny 2 in September 2016. I don't think that's an unreasonable expectation. So if it gets pushed back from that, that is a delay as far as Destiny players are concerned. Yeah, and especially because that release schedule came out that Destiny 2 was originally supposed to come out actually the month that the Taken King came out, so it wasn't unreasonable to think because the Destiny 1 was delayed a year later that we'd see it, you know, like this fall, but if news is going around, if Activision, you know, sources are saying, hey, we need more time, we're going to push this game, we'll give Bungie more time, then that's great. I mean, they need to make a good sequel. So, okay. No, no, let me let me so, ask you a question. Before though. before you move on, Brett, I just want to I want to say this is that I would normally agree with Robbie on this is that when you delay a game, it's for the best. Uh, it just gives the developers more time. But this also comes on the heels of a weekly update. Bungie didn't put any any weekly updates. They normally do a weekly update every Thursday, uh, and they they took a month off. Uh, they yeah. came back and they announced uh, a small you know festival of the lost type of Type of event, Crimson Days. Crimson, it's gonna have, cur- yeah. It's gonna have Crimson Doubles, which I'm actually excited about. Uh, and then also, in, they kind of talked a little bit about PvP, which I have a separate issue about. Uh, but like, there's this general kind of feeling like there's not enough content in Destiny to sustain a community. So I think there's a feeling in the Destiny community that we're all scared because we don't know if there's going to be enough content that it will sustain itself, right? It's like, you know, we all know that we're all going to love Destiny 2 when it comes out. It doesn't matter when it comes out. But, like, will the community be able to survive and to thrive while we wait? That's where we're scared about, I think. I think think in the long run... I I think in the long run, people are so like, man, I go to work. And I have, like, no bullshit, nine, ten dudes that all play Destiny chronically, like, religiously. Yeah. They got three characters. They're all, like, 318 or some crazy shit. And they continuously – that's how I heard about this news that you're talking about in this article. My guy comes up to me. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to have anything to do with the game I love. Like, people are mad because they have such, like they, – they love this damn game. And then yeah. you're taking them away from it. That's why people are so mad. 
it, it has nothing to do with them being uh, like they. Yes, they want the content. They want it really, really bad. But at the same time, they're going to come back as soon as that content is out. There's no doubt matter. about it. I think it's it's a in between uh, the release of the Dark Below and House of Wolves, my raid team got basically halved. Right, is the people I raided with through the Vault of Glass and uh, the Dark Below content. About half of them just didn't come back for House of Wolves because you know in that five or six months they just kind of moved on to other games. One of them sold his PlayStation. You know, those guys just didn't come back. So if we have like longer than a year between releases. Like, am I going to have to build a new raid team every year? Like, that that sucks. You go on your friends yeah. list right now, and mm -hmm. the guy that sold the PlayStation, you delete his name off of your friends list. <laughs> <laughs> that man is no friend of mine. Well, well, <laughs> let me ask you a question, uh, Brian. How much credence do you give to this leak uh, from Kotaku? Now, I will say this. Kotaku has been, Kotaku's been blacklisted uh, because a lot of their um, leaks have actually come out to be true. And uh, certain yeah. companies, certain companies don't like that. And um, even though it's what I consider real journalism, them actually giving this information to the public, uh, publishers, developers don't like it when their information gets, you know, leaked to the public. Do you uh, give this Kotaku uh, article any credence? Do you think that's a pretty legitimate uh, article, or are you in the the mindset where it may be just fluff? It may be fluff. It may be Kotaku's been basically bashing Destiny since Destiny came out. Uh, they get a lot of clicks for doing so. You know, there's like, it's Destiny's a funny game. There's this huge community that really loves it, but there's also this other community that really loves to hate it. Mm. And it's, it's like, this article is one of those articles that's designed to get both of those groups to click on it. <laughs> Yeah, you know it's what fine. I mean? It's, it's uh, fine I can hear it. Yeah, I yeah. can hear it now. Oh no! Oh yes! Yeah. <laughs> Situations. Yeah. Like yeah. it's the funny thing. I, like I, I'll do a Twitch stream and I'll get three or four comments every time I do it. People still play this game. Yeah. Like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing that. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you wasting your time? Go play another game. <laughs> you tell you me. You don't want to watch Destiny. Like wh what? How did you find yourself here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You tell me another shooting game that made that kind of impact on people there, the way they play video games, and I'll and I'll agree with you. But there is nothing that has done that. Not since like, like Call of Duty or Halo. Well, I, I think, think. I, yes. I, I believe yes, that. But even then, even I then, the the social aspect of Destiny is fucking beyond anything. Yeah. I think I think Call of Duty Call of Duty revolutionized the first person shooter genre, and I think Destiny revolutionized the social aspect of the the first person shooter genre. I think they're both just as important in their own way. Yeah. Honestly, how, how many Destiny Destiny's... players is their entire friends list just made up of people they raid with or people that they play Trials of Cyrus with or Iron Banner with? You know, how many Destiny players have just like huge friends lists filled of Destiny other Destiny players? Yeah. Yeah. I met I, half I, the I met half the Inner Black Ninjas friends playing yeah. Destiny. Yeah, you know Dan, Dan, yeah. Mr. Man, he has no bullshit. He had a friends list. When we started playing, we only played Battlefield together. Then I was like, Oh, you should check out this game, Destiny. It's gonna be it's gonna be like the next big thing, not knowing it was gonna be what it is now. But he's like, Okay, yeah, I'll check it out. He bought it. He went from having twenty people on his friends list to having two hundred and forty people on his friends list, and they're all Destiny players. Every yeah. fucking last one of them, other than other than the seven people he knows in real life that are like Battlefield players. <laughs> wow, that's crazy! Yeah, it is it's, crazy. It's a phenomenon. Uh, that's that's something that can't be argued. Uh, it's it's insane what has happened here. I'm really uh, intrigued to see what happens in the future, though. If any publishers learn from this, and what it can mean for other games, you know, big games, games that we're excited about playing in March. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a game that hopefully learns a lot. Hopefully yeah. learns what the community wants and what they wanna, what 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 drives the game to to stay along for so long. Like Destiny, look at it; it's still going. It's going on two years, and people are still playing the shit out of it. You know, just now you're starting to dwindle away. You should be okay with that. In my eyes, you should be okay with that. You've gotten your money yeah. worth, absolutely. Every other game, though. I would be okay with that, except for that social factor of it. Yeah, it's like I, you're in love with it. I, I don't want those <laughs> friends to drift away to other games. You know, I'm gonna play the division, and I I'm guaranteeing you, like my entire raid group is gonna be playing the division because we've already talked about it, and we don't know what the end game content of the division is gonna be. But I'm hoping there's a six man raid so that like the same <laughs> guys can jump there's in there. Eight man, raid. eight man raids are confirmed. Oh really? Yeah, oh, up to man. eight man raids right now, and then people are t like, when I brought up the twelve man thing, they're talking about twelve man raids later on. Oh, that would be sick. 
Yeah, so, they said at the uh, the minimum there would be eight people. There may be even more. Like they're still finalizing that. So, but the end game content is supposed to have like a big, you know, push with a lot of players in it. Mm, if I was not... developing a game to compete with this kind of situation, with this social thing and raids and end game content right now, I know that you get crucified for doing this, but I would leave stuff off of the disc so that I could release <laughs> new content every three months. In a sense, as 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 you know me, I'm an I'm an angry person when it comes to that shit. I thought that yeah. stuff was on the disc the whole time, but yeah. at the same time, you are fueling my my drive to play the game. So I, I dig that, man. Like as as much as it is bad, it's still carrying the game in in the long run. Yeah, especially if you made like the first one or two free. Well, that's I like they already, totally justify it. They already came out and they said Brooklyn is not going to be on the game at launch in uh, Division because no it's going to be a DLC. You gotta what wait the for fuck, the man? Fuck the Division, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the the map you're stuff. getting is, is decently sized, so I don't think anyone's going to have really a gripe about it. I can't wait for that game, man. I'm really looking I'm forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we're going to be playing it next week on yeah. the uh, yeah. video. Everybody's yeah. going to be playing it. Hopefully oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. I'm not going to be available for the show because we're going to be playing the division. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know, Brian. Good to know. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking, why are YouTubers so excited for the division? Uh, well, I've been excited for that like, ever since I heard about it. I remember that E3 came out? Yeah. When we first heard about it? Man, that, that game looked exciting right from the get-go. Well, was I was more really excited for that game than I was for Destiny at that, that E3. It was one of the first games that I saw that really, to me, spoke next generation back when we were in the seventh generation. You know, it doesn't it doesn't look as good as it did when they showed it. It doesn't just, now, no. But but it's by far not a horrible game to play, and it runs smooth and it's fun as hell. So yeah, I think yeah. a lot of people. I played the alpha. I was impressed. Did you see the the <laughs> screenshots of the PC version? Four K there, screenshots. There's a there's a PS4 video of it running at 1080. The whole video yeah. is 1080, yeah. So I think it, I think Xbox is kind of like taking taking the the oh we we're gonna get early access to stuff and running with that, even though it's gonna run better on PlayStation, which is kind of weird. Maybe they should unlock another core. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they just got cores just in in the lock lockers. In the Xbox One, Xbox record that. <laughs> Damn. All right, well. I, I, Brian, what would you say to all your Destiny uh, fans out there who watch you specifically for Destiny who are, I guess, maybe a little um, depressed that there might not be anything coming for Destiny this year? Tell them to jump I, on I, the, the division. Yeah, it's a fucking bummer. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, this is a real bummer. This is bad news. I, I, feel like, I feel like Bungie right now does not have their act together. That's how I feel. It's like they, they're not communicating with their fan base well. They they don't make their they don't make their fans feel like they're part of the conversation, right? Uh, they feel lied to, frankly. I would go that far. You know, even if even if Budgie is intentionally misleading their fans, we feel like they're misleading us. Mm. So, you know, even if that's not even if that's not what they're trying to do, they still have a problem on their hands and they need to fix it. Yeah. Uh, and you know, they made they made a promise in year one. Not verbally, but by by structuring the game like they did. You know, when we bought into year one, we bought into two DLCs a year, and then an exp like a bigger expansion, and that promise is not being fulfilled. Yeah. So I I mean I think they got a they got a problem over there. They can't make that shit fast enough. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's so many expectations, too, because, you know, Destiny isn't always online game. People want stuff to always play, but honestly, most developers, when they're working on their next game, like, they go quiet for years. You don't hear anything from them. They go quiet, and they're working on their next project. With Bungie, it's like they always got to be saying something, or people are going to get upset. So that really stinks for them. But Hey, Briar, uh, they Briar. themselves. What if they what if they take the old raids and they add in like the challenge mode type thing to those and make them harder and like add different kind of ways to do it? Would you be okay with that? Would That'd you be cool that? for a couple of weeks? But how many times have you done the vault of glass? Shit, if personally? I get new if I get new gear, if I get new stuff, yeah, man, new gear is nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'd rather really have a new raid though. Oh, who are you telling? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real though, how many times have you personally done the vault of glass? 
Oh my! I don't even know. I fucking can't. I have to look at the app. I bet you, I bet you at least a hundred times at least. Yeah. So how many times do you want to run it again? I don't. But it would give me a new mechanic with new enemies. That'd yeah. be cool. Like have taken enemies be in there. Have all kinds of crazier shit going on. I'd be all for it. Yeah. I mean, they they got the geometry, so why not just like. How hard is it to just like do different enemy placements and stuff? Yeah, switch the. I don't know. I don't know how hard that is. You could even switch some of the bosses around. You know, make make yeah. new bosses in in a sense, not new, but like a bigger version of the same boss with new mechanics. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, or like nightfall versions of the raids. Something they need something. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. They need to figure out something that adds replayability to that game if they're gonna release content this yeah. slowly. I, I got a question since we're on Destiny because I haven't played the game in a very long time. Is Me Prison neither. of Elders does, does the Prison of Elders have a purpose anymore? What are you talking about? That? Back when we played <laughs> Prison of Elders, Prison of what? Actually, What's that? I don't remember that either. Yeah, I mean, is it, it doesn't exist anymore? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you guys like, a lot, we're a lot of it a lot of the shit a lot of the shit people used to do like all the raids that a bunch of other stuff nobody does any of it anymore because they have no reason to yeah I was saying there was no reason towards the end of it Kate and I we stopped playing it because we were getting pretty much the same things yeah. I was thinking that yeah. by now they would have restructured it and maybe added new enemies, no. new gear, n- nothing. Wow, it's just sitting there. Prison of Elders yeah. has been dead in the water almost since it came out. Like it just didn't catch on. So wow, wow. Was, I like how you guys. Uh, it was, it, it, it was probably the worst, worst content that Destiny's ever put out. Wow. I mean, they tried, but it just people wanted a raid so bad that's what we wanted. So yeah. All right. For those who don't know, I just got trolled by the Beastly Thoughts crew. Hey, welcome. <laughs> I was like, oh, Briar's doing this? I'm going to go on in on a team. I got Beastly. trolled by the oh, tag team. <laughs> <laughs> team. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys want to get started with the news? Yeah. All right. Filming is wrapped on Assassin's Creed the movie, and it is set for release on December 21st, 2016. I am looking forward to this. I uh, really? I know it starts map Michael Fassbender. I mean, it looked cool from the stuff they showed. I mean, I know video game movies typically aren't the best, but maybe this would be the really first good one. And Is there I, a trailer I have, for this or anything? Magneto with knives. No, there's no trailer. There's just been a lot of screenshots and stuff because they just finished wrapping it, so it's, you know. I mean. I'll probably like the movie more than I do the games. That's how I feel. Hopefully the movie doesn't run like the games. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like five frames per second and it's so choppy. What if, what if Michael Fassbender's face just disappeared all you saw was his eye? The characters are flashed through the walls. They're like hopping on the walls. We want to keep this oh, as real as true to the game as possible. Oh, my God. All the people are standing like this and shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the glitches in Unity were the best. Jesus, there were so many people like walking through walls and like humping a wall. And like, dude, the reason I the, the reason stuff. I played that game was to see it break. That's the only reason why I played it. <laughs> it broke a lot. <laughs> really that game yeah. was hot trash. So, anybody uh, at, at all interested in the Assassin's Creed movie besides Robbie? I am, uh, but we'll see. Oh, no, no, because I. I <laughs> I don't see how you can make a story out of it. I really don't. They are, they're struggling to make a video game story. What makes you think they're going to no, make a No, no, no. That's where you got it wrong. They're struggling to make 500 video game stories that's, out of it. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> if, if they, if they could have just together. picked one story and made a movie based on that, that's, that might be what they're doing hey, here. Hey, they did that a long time ago, and they did it way better. It was called The Matrix. They got hooked into these <laughs> fucking machines and went into this world. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never heard of it. That movie was the hotness on DVD. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, that's Back right. In the day. It came out and it was like HD DVD and then normal DVD and everyone was stoked. Yeah. Oh god, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, so they got really good talent in this movie though. We'll, we'll see. Like, I I think it could be good though. We'll see. The thing is, is that dude isn't really in a lot of bad shit. You yeah, he's true. For you, so he's in a lot of good good movies. So you ever seen Prometheus? Yeah, that's a great movie. I love that movie, man. I hated it. Oh, well, well, everybody's really? entitled to be wrong once in a while. Which are your... You wanted the real <laughs> alien ass. No. This is the internet? No. Your opinions do not matter. 
<laughs> I'm sure five people just said that in the comments too, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the internet. Opinions can't be uh, fair. That's not fair. All right, so so moving on, guys. Microsoft has filed a new trade for, trademark for Phantom Dust. Apparently, this game is still coming. It, no, it's never happened. Isn't that, that they, isn't that that game where they showed like, a trailer for it and it was some guy sitting on a bench and, and then no like, like was excited for it and no one heard of it and then it got the developer got shut down and no one cares about it now. Well, no that, they, the original was made on like original Xbox, but it was cool for like a niche group. Like everyone didn't really enjoy it. That's why I don't get the reason why they're making it. I don't either. It confuses me. Like, no one knows what this game is. No one played the old one. And it was just like, huh? When it got announced. Like, it wasn't exciting. I don't know. It's just... Yeah. Whatever. They have the trademark, but that game is never happening. Guaranteed. What was the original? I don't even remember this. It was was called... What was it called? It was just Phantom Dust. This is a reboot of that game. Is it? I thought it was called something else. No, it seems to be Phantom Dust. Yeah. Was this the one where you had, like, psychic powers? Yes. No, that yeah, yeah. Was it? Oh, I, I remember this game. This is the game where you had to clean the stage with the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> hey oh. Clean all the dust. Mm. See, guys, we don't, don't even know what this game is. Let's just move on. Okay. Forget it. No one cares. Let's keep going. Get back. What's yours? We're losing interest as we talk about it. Let's like, all right, Robbie, what's the next story? <laughs> so people are going to... Uh, come at me for this and say it's the slowest news week it is. McDonald's will begin selling chocolate covered French fries in Japan starting 20, January 26th. And I have I a know. That sounds fucking that delicious. That sounds great. They're I trying just to, to talk about it. It's funny. Cool. Let's They're cover ourselves with chocolate fries. fries. Hell yeah. Get together and have some fun, you know what I'm saying? There you go. There they are. <laughs> yes. They're, try- yeah. trying- They're trying to sabotage the Japanese people to try to get them to be fat like Americans. That's what's going on. Well, they're, they got, they're on the right <laughs> fucking track. <laughs> but they're, like, they're like, there's no way we can put these in America because there'll be people having heart attacks everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> literally, people dollars. just yeah. have a heart, a heart attack in the drive-thru and it'll be backed up for hours while the EMS <laughs> is <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I feel like the septic. I don't think this is in our news, but to keep with the Japanese theme, in Japan last week, uh, Xbox One sold 99 consoles. I got 99 I problems. <laughs> they got 99 <laughs> problems for damn sure. They only sold yeah. 99 in a week. 127 million people live in Japan. And they sold I, mean, 99 I don't know about consoles. you guys. I'm over to Japan after this. I'm sold. Speaking yeah. of that, what did, what did Xbox do? What did they do to deserve this? Like, really? They like, did what? something real bad. Like, what, the, what is the deal with... I don't understand. I don't understand. In all Japanese fairness, like, no, no home, co- home consoles are selling like they used to in Japan. Like, Japan has yeah. kind of moved on off of home consoles. I'm talk- They're playing I'm talking mobile about games. As a, whole, as a whole, what did Xbox do? What did well, they do? It was, that E3. It. it was that E3. They came out during that E3 and just fucked everything up. No, I, I think that the problem with uh, Japan and, and, uh, and Microsoft is the Japanese people because of the, the way that they are, they see Western uh, companies like Microsoft as kind of imperialistic, and they're That's the kind exactly of, what it is. They're the antithesis of what those people believe in as far as their culture, as far as being humble yeah. people. It's they all see, culture. They don't see, like they Americans. They see the Western uh, companies as this boastful, very proud, rich asshole of a company, even or though they may not... Fuck yeah! <laughs> Even though they may not be that way, that's the way the Japanese people in their own minds see companies from the West. That's why Nintendo does well there. That's why Sony does well there because they're like, okay, these are our people. They believe in the same fundamental things that we do. They have the same ideals, but the West, they're just fucking assholes. We're not going to support them. That's really the way that they, they feel, in my mind, about the West. It's like a Western yeah, imperialist. Oh, fuck yeah! Coming to save the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Coming <laughs> in the same motherfucking day, yeah. <laughs> that was a great movie. Freedom oh. is the only way, yeah. yeah all right, so this is a new story that I actually just found out today when you guys put it in the in the chat window here. Nintendo's upcoming NX console will offer free online multiplayer with the option to upgrade to a premium subscription for a monthly or yearly fee. NX may also have compatibility with smartphones, PCs, and even other consoles, such as the PS4. 
<laughs> yeah, so there's two pieces of news really in there. Yeah. There's more, actually. There's uh, stuff Three. about backwards compatibility. It's a survey, really. Yeah. It's a survey. Yeah, this is yeah. from the survey that they, was taken they online. Took, they took the Nintendo survey, and then, like, a lot of people were kind of, like, feathering out what can actually happen in the console, like the whole uh, 900p thing. They came out and they said that uh, there's a part of the console that is going to run at 900p, and 60 they, frames per second. And 60 yeah. frames per second, but a lot of them are a lot of people are thinking that it's going to be a handheld unit that's going to be 60 frames a second at 900p, which would oh, which would be fucking bananas if they do that. That'd be nice. That, that, what? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people a lot of people are thinking that they're they were talking strictly about a handheld, not the console itself, and they're talking about that the console will do 4K imagery at at max. So well, that's for I'm, video streaming. Yeah, that's the yeah. other rumor. 4K oh, yeah. streaming at 60 yeah. frames per second. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, it, from from the sounds of this, this Nintendo NX, this console might be these lot, as far as and a lot of people. Man. A lot of people are thinking because it's on scale to for them to release a handheld that they're going to release the handheld first. It's going to come out like in the sense of like uh, a 3DS, but they're going to show it alongside the console, and then the console will be out next year. A lot of people we are talking about that. So we won't get the, the console this year, which is a lot, what I was actually expecting. I, I hope they I hope that's not true. I hope it's the whole it. fucking shebang. Yeah. Release well, the whole thing. Yeah, I would prefer that as well. That way that uh, they'll be able to sell software for both and know that their their install base is a solid base. Now, I got money. Take it, motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, take it. Yeah. Who are you who are you telling? If I can if I can play Destiny at work, oh my Jesus, we're not getting no work done. And, and <laughs> oh my god. Usually Nintendo is the company that kind of sets trends and everybody follows them. You know, with the controllers, everyone followed the rumble pack. The analog controller, the motion controllers, everybody's always tried that. But I'm thinking here Nintendo is probably learning from Microsoft and Sony uh, with their premium subscription service, where you might be able to get Nintendo games on. Uh, Kind of like PlayStation Plus and uh, Xbox games with gold. I'm thinking that's what that would mean. And I kind of so, like the idea that the online multiplayer are not going to have to pay for it. Like they're not going to bundle in all oh, all these free games and stuff. Like you just have the multiplayer if you want. That's all you want. I that's like the best that option. Yeah. That's if the best you get of if you get online plus like a party chat system for free, dude. A lot of people are going to be like fuck playing Xbox or paying for yeah. playing for what? Yeah. What are you paying for? You're paying for some three-year-old games that you're getting for free? I'm what good. would the premium subscription be? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking that that'll be something similar to PlayStation Plus where you yeah. get some games for free. That, I mean, in my mind, that's the only thing. Either maybe, that or you'd be able to stream Maybe access games. to the Nintendo eShop? Like, oh, my God. Like oh, a, my God. If they did that, you can eat. All you can eat. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <That'd be insane. laughs> All you need Nintendo games. Uh, as I said before, take my money. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had some money to throw yeah. at the screen right now. And then there are t- a lot of people were talking about where they're going to have a achievement system, kind of like how the Xbox and PlayStation have trophies and whatnot. I hope so. Sir. It's about when time. you no, when you do the trophies or the achievements or whatever the hell they're going to be called, the more you do in a game, you'll gain like these points, and then you can the use those points to buy stuff. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's a great Which idea. Which would be fucking. <laughs> For a trophy whore like myself, play the most. Yeah. Yes, for a trophy whore like myself, I'll be fucking Oprah rich. Everybody would be all over <laughs> trophies then, because honestly, oh, yeah. I do not care about trophies. But imagine if every time you got a platinum, you got points to buy games. Hey, but would you care? Would you care if you could play Super Mario World and it had a, a, a trophy? So, would Hell you care no. then? You wouldn't care. No. Yeah, right. That'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> I didn't know that was like, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I was like, yeah. Super Mario or Mario yeah. 3. And have yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, dude. Add trophies to it. Yeah. Link to the past. Like, give yeah. me that. Give me I, that. I, I can see Nintendo I, doing something kind of fun with trophies, too. Like, yeah. They did that on like a different take on it. And yeah. imagine, too, with the portable NX, if you can take, like, a 3D Mario game on the go, and you can take Call of Duty on the go, and Destiny on this one thing, that's, like, Holy shit! The thing is incredible. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and my like my group of guys I always do like LAN parties with like certain games. We don't need to fucking worry about TVs anymore. We'll just be like, yeah. fuck it, just bring your bring your handheld and play on that if you don't oh, have a TV. That would be nuts. That would be. I feel like we're hyping yeah. this thing into a console that can't no, possibly no. exist. This fuck NX that. just has so much potential. <laughs> we don't know what it is. No. Like the, the other part of this story that really intrigues me is the possibility, well, this thing is going to work with smartphones, 
PCs, tablets, and possibly other consoles, competitors like PlayStation 4. What type of applications do you guys think or see feasible to actually work with the PlayStation 4? What could they do? Video that streaming, actually... maybe? I don't know. I mean, oh, man. I don't I know really how they it works do it. Like, uh, you know the way you can do it with uh, PS4 right now is where you can basically stream the, the data out. You know, you can you can play a PS4 game on your Vita oh, or on oh, your right. on your Sony TV or on your PlayStation. I don't even know what that thing's called anymore. Is it the Vita TV or the Live TV? It's called the yeah. PlayStation TV. PlayStation, PlayStation TV. Like, what if it was something like that? Or uh, Steam has that too, where you can basically you can have like a dedicated game system that that streams that to other other boxes around the house. So you can yeah, play you can play yeah you can play PC games on your living room TV based. Do you ever try? You ever try playing your Xbox like that? I've I tried playing my PS4 on it, and it's I, play, I have to have a hardwired connection to do it. I like br- I bring my laptop into like um, my bedroom or whatever, and mm-hmm. I'll bring my Xbox controller and I'll play my Xbox game on my PC. Does it work well? Oh, oh it works. It works fucking it works, amazing. Works it works well. Yeah, I've been, I, I, I played almost all of Tomb Raider like that. I was watching the the football while I was playing Tomb Raider almost the whole time. It's nice. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it, it works flawlessly, Briar. I've used that as well, um, and I was totally shocked at how well uh, playing my Xbox to my Windows 10 device worked. It was it makes sense a, that a one to one. That's the kind of thing that Microsoft's going to be good at, right? Is oh, like yeah. networking. <laughs> oh, yeah. and if Nintendo, like, say Nintendo does that, that would oh, be, be awesome. oh my. I would no, just like a, like a modern console out of Nintendo would be so hot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it'd like be so fun to have. It's, fu- it's fucked up that you need to say that because they were the king of shit back in the day, and now it's like, please just release something on par with what's out there. You know, when what I'm was saying? the last time they had a console that was like the shit though? I think it was the SNES. Super it's Nintendo. Uh, I like the N64 a lot, but. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say it's you guys, you guys know what? I should say I like Goldeneye. That's what I should have said. I had some <laughs> of my favorite times ever with my GameCube playing Smash Brothers. Some of the best, Whoa. most memorable, memorable times. Fuck, I'm a Double Dash fan, game. so GameCube no, like, was, like was not like cutting edge technology, though. It wasn't, but I, I'm just talking about overall fun. Yeah, that compared to the Xbox and the PlayStation Two, though, it, was, it lacked. Oh yeah, yeah, it lacked for sure. Yeah. They had a uh, lunchbox uh, handle. Come on now. Although I no. bet there's more <laughs> games you could go back to. Out of the GameCube, that wouldn't that wouldn't hurt your eyeballs like the PlayStation Two and Xbox. Oh, that, that's oh, yeah. the good thing about Nintendo is their 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 stuff aging. It's yeah. cartoons. So I was gonna look the same. Yeah, which is genius. I was actually that's watching somebody on Twitch who was playing a PC emulation of Mario Sunshine, and he had it running in. I think he had it running at 1080p in widescreen. It looked marvelous. Wow, it looks good. Yeah. <clears throat> let let me ask you guys. A- did you see the Unreal videos yeah, of the Mario? Oh, that yeah. shit is stupid. Oh, oh my yeah, god! You didn't see it? You didn't no. see that? He's like oh, on a subway. God. He like goes on a on a train and he there's, takes the train in the subway and then he gets out. And he's like running on hills and shit. And it's there's all a guy, Unreal. There's one guy who uh, recoded it and did it all in Unreal. Made his made all new uh, landscapes and made his own world. It's and beautiful. it was unbelievable. I'm gonna check that Mario out. Like that. It's on uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. Uh, I got a question for you guys. Do you guys think Nintendo is going to continue on with their console looking kind of toyish, or do you think they're going to step more into the sleek, modern design of, of new technology? Now, if we look at the past, Nintendo, the original NES, was pretty decent looking for the time. Super Nintendo looked like a toy. Uh, Nintendo 64 looked like a toy, and uh, the GameCube looked like a toy. Uh, do you yeah, think? I like their current industrial design now. It's they're the Wii and the Wii U. I like the design of those. They look modern. They look sleek. They they could almost be like Apple products, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, they do look like it. Also, like the way they're built, they're built really solid. Like, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the PlayStation is a is a great system. The build quality on that system is fucking utter Not trash. It, it really is. The controllers and the system itself. Yes, those little rubber feet fall made. off almost immediately. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the the little touch buttons, mine are broken. Mine, my, I have an upstairs PS4 the, right here. It's broken. That's the what's cool. button is just broken. That's what's cool about the new console is they they revamped those yeah, buttons. They're, they're, they're actual yeah, they're buttons. buttons now. Yep. Yeah. Damn. But still, I mean, that's not an old system. I guess it's getting there though. Three years, right? Three years old. <laughs> yeah, three. It will it will be. It's coming up on it. It's already out of its right, terrible cool twos. Change. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's go to the next part of the uh, NX news. Who wants to start? I just us like off? talking about Nintendo. Oh, we're more Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, more Nintendo. Come on, brother. 
Uh, reports suggest that parts of the NX hardware will be released in two separate time frames. The handheld is to be released this November for around $200. The home console will be released sometime in 2017. No price point or release window has been given. That mm. kind of changes everything right there. If they're separate units, this is going to be super interesting for me. Like, I thought... That's what we thought, thought, like, oh, they're going to be right? Isn't that what we've kind of come to believe? Yeah. Would there be two separate units, but they'd work together? Kind of. Of course. I thought they were both going to be, you know, always bought together. Like, they have to have each other, but maybe they are just totally separate. I, I think. Expect that. I think what they're trying to do, to be honest with you, and this is sad, me being a Nintendo fan, as you know, I like That's Nintendo. Cool. Nintendo is my joint. Um, I think that they're fucking, tr they're gambling. They're it's trying to see water. how many people feed off of this handheld. Once the handheld gets sold, they're like, all right, well, we already have all these people with the handheld. Now let's push out the system. Well, yeah. I don't know, uh, Inner Black. My thought is this. Nintendo kind of You can call me them. Justin. You can call me Justin. You know me like that. It's all right. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> I got you, right here. Um, all right, Justin. The, the way I feel about Nintendo when it comes to the handheld is they kind of own, own that market. Really, there's no other video game company that has – Oh. It's hands around the handheld market like Nintendo. I don't think they're so much uh, testing the water for the handheld. I think whenever they release a new handheld, people are going. It's kind of like Apple when they no, make a I new. Mean that. Yeah, they're 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 releasing that, and then when, based off how many people buy it, they're going to be like, all right, well, we need to release the system. They're going to sell you shit know? tons. I oh. mean, I think they know that regardless. It's the way Nintendo is. Whenever they release a new handheld. It's something inside human beings. We all go to the store and buy them. It's kind of like whenever a new uh, MacBook or a new iPhone is is out. People are lined up. It's worse though with the Nintendo handhelds because, like, I I use my iPhone every fucking day. My Nintendo handheld I use for like a week after I buy it, and then it sits and collects dust. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> if you play Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter is like. I did play that Monster oh Hunter. God. I did. Monster Hunter is the jam. Yeah. There I was no time in my life. I think that was the problem with Monster Hunter. There was just not yeah. time in my life for yes. dust. In Monster Hunter. Yes, yes. <laughs> no well, what they could be doing, they could be be like, all right, well, how many people are going to buy the console if the console is like $600 with a handheld? You know? Okay, let's let's cut it in half. Let's sell the sell the handheld, and then later on we'll release just the console and then a bundle with the handheld and the console together. Yeah, so the people yeah. that bought the handheld already are getting a cheaper console, you know? Because you're mm -hmm. not going to have many people that are dumb and going to fork over a lot of money for a console. All right. Yeah. Assume this is true. Assume this is definitely happening. What do you want to see out of this handheld? I want to see. I definitely want to see that that no 900 fucking cameras screen with with uh, sixty frames per second. I don't no want cameras. No cameras. No cameras. No front camera. No back camera. I don't need that shit. I got a phone for that. I don't yeah. need that. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but I think they're definitely going to going to include that in some way uh, with that handheld. They even uh, said on one of the videos I did this week. One of the specs for the NX was that you can stream. From your device, uh, in, in 4K and 60 frames per second, you can actually do live uh, video calls. And so I'm thinking that's probably from the controller, which would have a, a camera on it. So more than likely, this handheld device will have some form of camera. If, if history is any indicator, maybe all of those like, devices have 25 cameras on them. So maybe what, it's just streaming like Netflix or something. Netflix in 4K or YouTube Netflix in 4K and or whatever. Yeah, on your Nintendo NX. Yeah, but I'm I'm talking about the the Skype calling aspect of it, not so much Skype, but the video calling that I was reading about. You're going to actually be able to do video calls and and talk to other Nintendo uh, NX owners, and I'm thinking that it's going to be through some type of camera, proprietary camera that's on maybe the controller. Yeah, man, I hate that idea. I hate that shit. It's yeah, so much wasted tech. Yeah. It's so much way like. Don't waste your time with that. Everyone got cameras on their computers, yeah. camera on their phone, camera on their tablet. Like, I agree. I mean, I love you know the Vita. It has sixteen cameras on it that I don't use. You know, three DS has cameras. On it. For you to touch. Three DS has a camera on it that's like the worst camera you've ever seen oh, in your yeah. life. What is that even there for? I can see if they put like yeah. a twenty megapixel on it or something, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying, looking at their past, they're gonna yeah. find a way to stick a camera on something. There's a, camera on the, there's a camera on the battery charger. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, it's it, a, like, it sends you on little... Twitter when your uh, batteries are charged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if they? What if they? What if they bundle this with a with a dope game like Zelda comes out and it's bundled with Mario Maker We all two. know. We all know Zelda is not on. The, it's on both consoles. We all know that. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be. It, it reminds me of Twilight Princess. Twilight where Princess. It's gonna yeah. come out as, like both. 
Well, hopefully it's a bigger difference between this one and the Wii U's version, though. Twilight Princess on GameCube and on the Wii, very little difference as far as the way the game looked and played. A lot of people bought that for the, hey, let me let me cut shit. Let me cut this sign up real quick. <laughs> let, me, let me do a little bit of this, you know? A little bit of this. Arguably the GameCube version was the better version. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to see some huge gap in between those two. After all, they're supposed oh, to be... I would love that. I would love to be able to play like the modern games on a Nintendo console plus Nintendo games. Yeah, it should, it should happen. Killer. It should happen before the end of our life cycle, Briar. Um, hopefully before uh, Robbie's life cycle is over, we have a modern Nintendo console that's able to play modern-looking video games. Oh, man, that's <laughs> a long life cycle. I sure hope they get yeah. together. I mean, they should. It is it Robbie? Want... Is it you, know really? be, you know what's even more crazy <laughs> about the whole Stop scenario? It. If they release this, right, they're on the same scale to be releasing their system alongside of the competitors the whole time now. Because it'll be, they're going to team up and pretty much do it every five years then. And that's when the new PlayStation and the new Xbox would be coming out, technically, if they don't release them early. Which then got... will be getting three systems in one year, which... That's that's a lot of fucking money. I'm sorry. I'm gonna start saving now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got so much love for Nintendo. If they were to come out with a console that that has the games first of all that we want, because they have some gems as far as their IPs. What game you want? want? What game you want? I want to know. I want to know what game you want. I want Zelda, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. I want. Uh, More uh, Metroid. I want. See, Metroid. That's the one where they're speculating that it doesn't sell enough. I would love a new Metroid game. I I would absolutely love it. I would still love a 2D Metroid game. But the game that I want the most is a real, truly open world Mario game. That's what I want. You know, like you're um, talking, no, uh, like not N64 Mario or something. I'm talking. Or? I'm talking Mario 64 okay. in modern technology, a huge open world where you can go and do so many things and get Grand Theft world. Mario. <laughs> Yeah, the fucking raccoon head. Cena has a mature side now. Yeah, we're serious this time. Yeah. You, you know what actually would excite me more than that is just having Mario Maker on the on a home on a handheld console. Oh, yeah. my, oh my god, god. that would be, be stupid. Amazing. It's hard for me to believe they didn't release it on 3DS. Uh, you want right. it? You want it strictly single player, or you want co-op, or what do you want? Co-op would be amazing. It would be amazing yeah. if you if you're playing on your television and someone else is playing on the gamepad and you're both in that same world. Can you imagine that? 900p, 60 frames per second. Yeah. Damn it! How about getting Destiny, Mario? The Division, Assassin's Creed, like all the multiplayer games coming to a Nintendo console? Uh, those would be cool, right? But I'm more interested in in the Nintendo IPs. I'm more interested in the stuff that I can't play what, anywhere else. You what know? do you think? What do you think about that uh, Dragon Quest game being announced way back when? Mm, Which, when it came out, they kind of slipped. Like when he was like, "Oh, it's coming out on the NX too, or whatever." The n next Nintendo console, and they weren't supposed to say it, but they did anyway. Like, oh, shit. Whoops! Take that yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, they, have they just been making handheld versions of Dragon Quest for like a while now? Um, they just came out with Dragon Quest Heroes, but that's like I don't know. I don't. It, it's it's more like a mock up, like a High Rule Warriors, like uh, Dynasty Warriors type thing. For me, uh, Square Square is definitely working very close with Nintendo right now. Um, the the fact that they got Cloud in the in Smash Brothers now, I think that we can expect something really good on the Final Fantasy front. Think that remix? Think that think that episodic remakes coming? <laughs> that I want that motherfucking episode, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, piss, that still pisses me off to this day. That pisses me off. Oh, and... I feel you, I, but see, the thing is, what if, what if is it possible? that this remake could be as good as the original. Now, the inner gamer in me says, hell no, and I'm pretty sure for you guys you feel the same way. Barring Briar, he hates Final Fantasy VII. But, Hater. For, but for me, there's a good possibility that these 20 years, with this game just gestating, they, they have the story. The things that maybe didn't make a lot of sense, they have had time to kind of rewrite history, and some of the stuff that could have been done better might be done better. It's possible... I mean, think about it. We play games uh, like Telltale's games and episodes, and they're all great. And, of course, once the, the, they all come out, you can buy the, the full package. What if this is the same way? What if it's just a really long episode? What if the first disc comes out and you can play it for 30 hours or 40 hours, and then you wait for two or three or four months until the second disc comes out, and it's really awesome, and two you play it? Two or three years. Possibly. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> why they're doing that. Because if they were going to make the legit game, and they were going to make a remake of it. Like, here you go. Here's your game. They would announce it, and then we wouldn't see it for, like, ten years, probably. 
That's mm-hmm. what we would see it. So they're they're kind of fueling the fire, being like, oh, here's here's a taste, you know. For the Final Fantasy fans that love it, like ourselves, are gonna pick that up, and then we're gonna we're gonna be hooked in, and then we're gonna buy every fucking episode after that. We're, I'm and already the hooked. Like so, I never played Final Fantasy VII. We'll get into it. You, you never played it, man. No, right, I've never played that game. I remember the day that I got that. I remember the day I got that. That's the reason why I bought my PlayStation One, and my brother told me, "Hey, you should you should get this game. You should get this game. You should get this game." And I got it, and we played that shit for like, oh, wow. no, we played the, only that game, me and my brother, for like, how many ever many hours. We'd be Ruby Weapon. We played forever. I got that as a birthday gift for my dad, and um, I remember the day I got it too. I also remember not leaving my room for a very very long yeah. time. Um. It's a, it's one of those games. I mean, if you look at it now graphically, it doesn't really stand up. My yeah, wife, I tried eyes. to I tried to get my wife to play it years ago. She's like, I don't want to play that shit. I was like, it's amazing. I want to divorce you, but um, I didn't divorce her. <laughs> but um, I got it on the PS4. It looks a lot better than the original. Uh, but I guess compared to the contemporary games that we we see nowadays, it doesn't hold up. But for me, it's still uh, very very. That, that's a lot of the reason why I don't go back. Beastly. I don't go back to games where I've played them. I try to not go back unless they're like cartoony based, like Link to the Past or something that doesn't really hold up age. Very well. Yeah, if it doesn't hold up well, I want to remember it in my head the way I remember it. Cause like, yeah. go play, go play N sixty four Mario oh. right now. Go oh. play that once. <laughs> I'm playing on the 3DS. I actually have the, the the Nintendo DS version. That doesn't count. That does not count. It looks better. It looks better on the DS than it did on 64. <laughs> but, but look, look at look at Goldeneye though. Goldeneye oh, is the same. Oh, that game looks like hot garbage. Looks like it was made in Minecraft world. And the, <laughs> the controls are so bad on that game too. You know, I mean, yeah, I, you I was use the playing... face buttons to turn. Like, what is that shit? <laughs> some of these games, some of these games are definitely just in, like you said, uh, better memories. Like Shinmu. I oh, played that on my Dreamcast, and then we I realized it. there there was only one analog. I was like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to control this? Yeah, that was the worst camera oh, ever to control. God, we just played scary. two at my buddy's house like a month and a half ago. We played two. We hooked up his Dreamcast, and we spent the whole afternoon playing it. And I was like, the camera used to be this bad? I don't remember yeah. this. <laughs> it's really, really bad. One of the only oh, games, a game that I still believe is going to be remade, I would love to be remade, and I know we got a lot of remakes. I want Shadow of the Colossus redone in PS4. Uh, yeah. Hardware. Whoa. That would be amazing. Oh my god. Yep. Even now, you know, the PS3 version, I still like my jaw drops playing that. I would love the control sucks, Briar. For those who don't like The Last of Us, the control in that game sucks. It's, it's worse. fine. It's fine for the single player. I don't know. It's like why do they have to reinvent the wheel for that game? I don't understand it. Uh, it's it's yeah, it's one of those strange situations. I remember when I first started playing, I was like, what the fuck is this? It's so weird, but after you play it, you're like, it makes sense. And Shadow of the Colossus is the exact same way. It's it's one it of those is. games where, where you run around, you how do you pick up stuff? It's supposed to be X, right? No, it's triangle. What the hell am I doing? Um, it's like the controllers have been completely turned upside down in that game, but after you play it and you get used to it, it's so rewarding. It's one of those special experiences. But I think that developers feel like in order for a game to be unique, they got to take every aspect of what you're used to and turn it on its head. And sometimes it doesn't translate well into the controls. As long as your game is long enough for me to get used to it, you know, then I'm okay with it. But if your game's like four hours long anyway, why the fuck am I getting used to your shit? <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, we're we're kind of getting down uh, to uh, time to, for for the end of the show. But before we leave, I want to remind everybody: if you would like to donate to the GoFundMe page for my stepdad, my mom, it's uh, GoFundMe.com forward slash Spoonman. It's in the description. Thank you to everybody out there. For supporting the Beastly Thought Show, uh, the guest, the, the host, and I uh, really appreciate everybody uh, for being here and making this show what it is today. Thank you all so much. True enough. True Absolutely. Enough. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. That was a quick self. hour. I looked at, I just looked up the clock. I'm like, we must have a half hour left. I'm like, no. That's, <laughs> oh, no. We talked about so hour. We talked about destiny, Briar. You know what happens when you talk about destiny. I don't know. I can't get you guys stop talking about it. <laughs> Play another Especially goddamn game, about guys. Destiny. Especially when we talk about Destiny possibly being on NX. You just can't stop. It's still good. Uh, do you think that would be possi- awesome. You think that's a possibility? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? I, I don't see why not. If Nintendo can get that third-party support, maybe there no will be bullshit. some crossover between, you know... Maybe Nintendo that's why they're Nintendo delaying Club. Destiny 2 to get it on the next Nintendo. Ooh, that would be nuts. If they do that, Ooh, a launch title. Do that, yes. I'm about, to get, I'm about to get really, really slim, even more slim than I am, because I'm not going to eat food at work. I'm just going to sit and play <laughs> video games. It's going to be horrible. Here's what you oh need for NX. You need a Mario game, you need Zelda, 
coming to the NX, you need Destiny 2 as a launch title, and you need Metroid from Retro Studios, because they've been working on something for a couple of years now. There you go. Mm. Boom. Sold. It's, it's, see, it's, the wishful thinking that's going on here is really, really wishful thinking, because if you look at Nintendo in the past, they've straight off the path... They've of continued what's to disappoint year after year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have. Hopefully they've they won't to, disappoint finally. They've got to totally do everything right and not do what they've been doing for years in order for any of this to come to fruition, man. I if mean, they did so, half of the shit we were talking about tonight, though, you think be, we'd all be, be thrilled about it. You think Awada yeah. had something to do with that, though? Could be. Maybe. Maybe. There's a good chance, man. That guy's yeah. strictly trying to please the Japan crowd, and he needs to avoid that shit. Yeah. Mm. And definitely the uh, direction for that company has definitely changed now that they have new leadership. The NX. Like, this thing, we don't know anything about it, too. It's all rumor. This thing has so much potential, though, and it does get me excited talking about it, because most of the stuff I've heard on, like, Nintendo's on the right track. Like, they're gonna do this right, and I think they can, they can come out and really come out and be like, we're here, we have a powerful console, we have these third parties back, we have this handle that works with this home console. They can nail this. They uh, absolutely I, can. It's like, I want them to so bad, right? But if you look at what they're doing, like, Nintendo's network sucks. I mean, it's solid yeah, when you play online. It, it's solid when you play online, but as far as the social aspect, as, oh, as far as the way that they've structured their uh, eShop, Everything just sucks on Nintendo. It's all bright and cartoony. They all suck, and... in my opinion. Like, every single one of those networks sucks. Yeah. Well, well when they go down. Especially. PlayStation's network sucks because they go down, but the way... No, the way the like... social features <laughs> work on PlayStation, I don't like that. It's like like getting messages that are six minutes old the minute they come in, like the lag. Seven, seven minutes for yeah, me. Yeah, like all, all that seven. stuff. Dude, the last time Iron Banner was going on... I got my guy to a four and some change. And I was like, oh, I'll do it when I get home. Got home. The fucking network was down. I was like, fuck Destiny. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was salty that day. I was so pissed, dude. I was so pissed. I was like, I'm not playing Destiny for like two weeks. I swear to God. Salt banner. Yeah, it's the salt banner. Now, right. now, now, Justin, just out of curiosity, how often do you play Destiny now? Because uh, everybody and their mothers plays it and their grandmothers plays it. I play it like probably... Three times a week, at least. Awesome. Ro- Ro- Robbie, what about you? How often do you play? I played Destiny one time on my birthday when I had friends over. and I, Other than that, I haven't played it in like four months. But I still okay. love the game. But I'm kind of done until Destiny 2 comes out at this point. Like okay. I'm ready for, for overhaul. Okay, and Briar, when's the last time you didn't play Destiny? Well, I didn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I wanted to get a He's going to think mean, about it. Like, yeah, I play it all the time. What are you talking about? I, two weeks ago, I went away with my wife. She that doesn't count. Play when you're now in your home, that does not count. <laughs> no, no, Brian. Briar.exe has stopped working. Hey, I've been playing a lot of Tomb Raider. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because Justin did mention uh, Tomb Raider earlier. And I know that uh, two weeks ago, you got the game. Yeah. And uh, you, you said last week that you know, you're going to be playing a lot of it. Have you had a chance to delve deeper into it? Or is yeah, it... I, I love that game. I think it's fantastic. Okay. I, I'm really happy with that game. All right. Well, I'm going to try to dig into some Halo this week. Um, hit me up. Beastly, hit me up. I'll play it with you. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, you play uh, cooperative, right? Yep, I beat it. I beat it twice already, so. Oh, you can play. I just realized, guys. Really? I never really? got to say what I've been playing. Okay. Yeah, what have you been playing? I was going to well, have a whole you topic passed on the opportunity, and now you want it back. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you guys want to get into this? We can go. We can keep going. Do you want to get into this? <laughs> See how young people act, Briar? You know, no respect. No fucking respect. <laughs> Everyone wants a trophy well, I nowadays. Was, wait, I didn't get us playing. You want a That's fucking right. participation to trophy? <laughs> Here you go. You came in I last. Want... Here's a trophy. Use that to buy a trophy. Thanks fucking for game. coming. <laughs> Better luck next time. I'm, I'm... Give him a fucking lollipop. No, uh, Robbie, what you been playing, Robbie? Real quick before before we're done. Before we fuck your soul up even more. <laughs> All right, we, we can talk about it next week, kids. <laughs> No, next we'll get week. Get to the topic next week. We're gonna forget week. about it by next week. What, what are you playing? Oh fuck's sake, Scott Dance. <laughs> That's a very vulgar right. game. Alright, this week <laughs> I have been playing something that a lot of people have been playing. I decided to get into it. On the PC, it's Blade and Soul. It's a, like an MMO yes, JRPG. Nice. It's fun. I haven't played it a ton, but I've been really enjoying it. It's free to play. Really liked it. And I've also been playing a ton of Call of Duty this week because Black Ops 3 came out at the wrong time, like right after Fallout 4 came out, and that was all I wanted to play. But I've been just pretty much been playing Call of Duty this week, and I wanted to discuss with you guys sort of 
Call of Duty 2016 because we had news of um, Brian Horton from Crystal Dynamics. He's working in Infinity Ward now. I was going to talk about this year's Call of Duty, but we don't have time. We'll do it next week. Well, l- let me just say this, yeah. Robbie. I don't know if you saw my video when I when I uh, announced that uh, GoFundMe for my stepdad, but I was playing Blade and Soul on that video. Blade yeah, and Soul, Briar, is one of the most beautiful, amazing MMOs I've ever played. Now, I've, I'm not really a big MMO fan. I played EverQuest years ago on my PS2. I uh, played Silk Road Online on my PC years ago. Blade and Soul looks like graphically it should it needs to be on PS4. The characters that you create are anime porn. If you like anime, this game, the way it animates, the way that you fight, all that shit looks so amazing. Well, it's a beautiful game. <laughs> so their it's boobs nice are they, they, they yes, and they move when you move. Now, all joking yeah. aside though, Justin, uh, it's a free to play game on PC. It's an amazing game. I mean, most MMOs, when you start to play them, you don't really care about the characters. Do I have to, character do I have to pay to win? Do I have to pay, no. to, pay to, no. do I have no. to buy them out? No. no. You, you, can, you, can, you can buy shit if you want. I haven't spent a dime. Kate's actually playing it right now on her PC. But um, it's a really like, fun game. I like really... Diablo or WoW or what it, what's it, what's it, what's it, what would you, what would you compare it to? It's like a, it's like a regular um, console experience other than the fact that it's an MMO. Uh, it's on PC. It's on PC, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 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 a very well put together gaming experience. You're you're this character that comes into the situation where your teacher is murdered in front of you. Someone takes this artifact, and the way that the enemies are presented at the beginning of the game, and you see what's going on, you really care about your character. You care about the world, and uh, I'm really really enjoying. It. I'm happy you're playing that, Robbie. That game is amazing. I saw it a few years ago, like three or four years ago, uh, on YouTube, and it it, it comes from. Um, uh, I want to say Taiwan. It comes from Korea. It's a Korean developed. Uh, I think game. South Korea. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. What's it called? A Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul. Look, look up a YouTube video of that game and look at the way these characters look. This game has more options for character creation than I've ever seen. Tons of people game, playing it on Twitch too right now. If, if exactly. You, uh, That's what I was like, gonna say. It's popular right now. That's why I got into it. Right. It was like it's something different. I'm gonna try it. It's fun. Check All right, it guys. I gotta cut you short though. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's over, everybody. Bye. Right. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. See you guys Bye. next yeah, week. don't forget to uh, check out the link in the description for uh, the GoFundMe. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Oh, also, stay tuned to our Twitter. Uh, I think there's a link to the Twitter in our description as well. We are going to be switching this, this live uh, show to Twitch at some point so that we can better integrate with the, uh, with the chat. Uh, so stay stay tuned to the Twitter, and uh, we'll let you know when that's going to happen. Awesome. See you we'll guys soon. Sounds good.